what are you doing? I'm using the power of coffee and tequila to make George Clooney walk through that door. Yeah, I think he's got other plans. Mace, what was that? Uh, the locals are invading. Weekend, you know, girls' weekend. Just the three of us, middle of nowhere. Uh, it was Lizzie's treat. Mm. That's very generous. That's how she was. When did you arrive? Uh, yesterday. And you say you heard gunshots last night? Yeah. Coming from across the field, I think. What was going on, do you know? No. Have any boyfriends at the moment? But you were close. She was my best friend. Could I get a glass of water? Yeah, yeah, sure. Don't mind my asking, but uh, how could she afford all this on a physio salary? Uh, no, um, this weekend it was a present um, from one of the patients she was helping for back pain. Whiplash. Very nice. Is that? Typical for Lizzie. She was one of those people just want to open up to her, you know. Do you have a name for this patient? Uh, Corrine. Somebody. Corrine. We'll have it at work. Yeah, thanks. Oh, I'll do without her. There's a shotgun cartridge full in the chest. No open coffin for you, pet. Time of death? Half one or two a.m. I might pare that down a bit back at the ranch. What's this? Well, it's a nice little pot, all this. Thought I might uh, scan the literature. Hey. 
Okay, so how are they doing with the house to house? A uh, young family in the house over there. I think they might have heard gunshots. Kid thought it was fireworks. Dad thought it was a car backfiring. Any idea when? Uh, one thirty-eight was the last one. Dad was in bed. And he saw the clock. Well, there's our time of death. They didn't see anything. Nah, not a chance. Look, every unit individually designed and guaranteed. You know the peaceful privacy of each of its guests. They might want to rethink that. This used to be wetlands, as far as the eye can see. Hey, sir. Now, I've much right to be here as anybody. I own these properties. If there's a problem... Do you see I stand, Hope? Now, can you step over here, mister? I'm fine where I am. All right, just wait, love. Get back in the car. Has somebody been hurt? I, a young woman. This house? And you are... T uh, Tib Hopkins, is she OK? She was shot dead, sir. Right. So, um, what, what, what happens now? We'll, we'll need to take care of this. Have to let people know. That's all in hand. Her friends were with her. Her friends? Mm. Her husband? Not married. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. It takes a minute. My wife just picked me up off the train. And there were reports that there were gunshots in these fields last night. I'd hope not. Local thugs, I expect, Saturday night. I can't believe it had run to all this. Do you have a code? Contact details. Might need to talk to you later. Of course. Thanks. Joe? Come on, sir. This way. Let's go. Sorry, who or what are lampers? Oh, Kenny, kindly inform our guest from the city. The folk that go about with the light of the moon, plus torches, headlamps, shooting nocturnal creatures, pests. Well, what have the badgers ever done to anyone? They get TB, they pass it on to cattle. Allegedly. Now we're going to need a full surge of that field. Let's see if we can get a ballistics match between the lamp of shotgun and the weapon that killed our victim. Ask around in the village. Now, it's going to be someone local organising these shooting sprees. Ask in the farms, shops, local pubs. And Kenny, pay for your own drinks. This is DCI Stanhope and DC. Look, I've got to be at the quayside in half an hour. Oh, very dapper. Hot date. An online thing? Oh, well, put her on ice, Mr. Doran. Search warrant for the premises. Me, Kenny. Robert Doran, you do not have to say anything. It may harm your defence. If you do not mention, when questioned, Come on, then, open up. Robert Doran, he's got form. He went down for... GBH, eight years back. You say so. 
only one of us took this one out. So yourself? Last night, early hours of this morning, you were... Hmm? We have evidence puts you in the field up near that new development. Evidence? Ah, I was hoping you'd bring that up. Cigarette butts were recovered from the field. Now, thanks to your previous conviction. Yeah, you got my DNA. Right. Imperial roll tobacco. Hey, you have my sympathy. Hard times if you smoke on those. Oh, I could have been there any time. I was, I was there two weeks ago. Mm. We've seized the shotgun held under licence to your pal Jackson Fisher, smothered in your prints. Was there any chance of a coffee? The gun you fired into some poor, defenceless little beast. Um. Ah, we found that and all. And together with your tyre prints all over the field, like figures of eight, It's a regular thing, this lamping. You may not like it. People don't complain. They thank me. Oh, and those weekenders down at Meadow Pond up for a bit of fresh air. And I'm not bothered to anybody. Anybody with you last night? Was on my own. Now that's a pity. Because this young woman was also killed with a shotgun 600 yards from the Badger. Do we know her? No, I don't know. Sorry, what's my client being charged with here? Use of the weapon or...? Oh, that's up to him. Now, there were other people with you last night. Hi. Names. Or did you see anything, hear anything while you were in that field? A car, maybe. A car, right. Colour, make a vehicle. I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, some mechanic. You are. If you saw... No, I didn't see it. Might have heard a car. Might have. Aye. Driving up the lane. Oh, so what? It could have been any one of the other guests. Any tyre prints we can't account for? Too many. They use the lane as a cut through down to the coast. Yeah, well, see my point? Some car could have been anyone. OK, ballistics. Was Lizzie murdered with the same shotgun? You know, different cartridges. But, you know, it's feasible it could have been fired from the same gun. Or Doran's got a second gun stashed away that we don't know about. We'll get a report by lunchtime, all right? Ah, PC Mark Edwards. Detective Constable. Oh, oh. well, under CID. So, what's the word on Doran's two comrades in arms? Yeah, the two brothers. Yeah, come on, come on, Jim and Jackson Fisher. Right, um, confirm Doran's story. The brothers went out shooting with them Saturday night. OK. But they left Robert Doran in the field with the gun, which I told them was against the terms of the licence. Doran then returned the gun to their possession a couple of hours later the same night. Yeah, what time? Sorry? What time did they leave him in the field with the gun? Oh, right, um, sorry. Uh, just shy of 1.30 Sunday morning. So, ten minutes before our time of death. Yeah, which is very convenient for the brothers. Oh, no, they've got an alibi. They stopped for petrol at 1.41 yeah, on the junction... Yeah, good work, Detective Constable. Oh, ta, thanks very much. So we have Robert Doran on his own, in the field, gun in hand. It's him. He fits the profile. He's got the form, but why? I mean, what reason would he possibly have for shooting a woman that he's never met? So, 
So, Robert Doran. Hey, don't start. Well, I'm just making conversation. I've been in how many interviews with you? I know how this works. Oh, right. Go on, I'm all ears. Never give up too much information. Never speak so loud you forget to listen. And never, ever ask a question you don't already, already know, know the, the answer. answer to. Okay. So go on, then. What do you know about me and Dora? Joe Ashworth, still wet behind the ears. When was this? Eight years ago. Closing time. Two fellas outside a pub in South Shields. In the blue corner, fractured skull. In the red corner, Robert Doran. Hardly a scratch on him. You talk to the landlord, the wives, the girlfriends. End of the day, you've only got their word for it, so you go with what you see. You went down for 18 months. Jury convicts, not some DC. Yeah, I know that. But you sent me this letter. You did nothing wrong. Hey, I'm Catholic, born and bred. You work it out. You still got it, this precious letter? Yeah. Can I see it? Nope. He broke that man's skull. No use blaming yourself, is there? Where are we off to? Green Franks. See if she can tell us any more about Lizzie. Andrew Franks. Such a god awful waste. It hit her quite hard. Corrine! Down in a bit. I mean, I never met her myself, but I know Corrine thought the world of her. Oh, well, Lizzie helped your wife with her back, is that right? Oh, yeah, big time. Mm. It's nuts. This poor dead girl. Mm. Makes you feel a little responsible. Well, why? Because your wife gave her the weekend as a present. No. Well, that as well. No, uh, we designed all the holiday units. What, you were the architect of...? <laughs> Meadow Ponds. Yeah. Mm. All our fault, I'm afraid. Nothing, it's mine. Corinne, this is a... DCI Stanhope. Dear Sashworth. Uh, it's a cathedral. It's well, meant to be. Yeah. Well, we were students at the time. Castles in the air. I let you dream back then. Oh, I don't know. I don't know why I hang on to it. Oh, it's a little reminder, isn't it? Why we got into it in the first place. Oh, uh, right. You knew Lizzie well? Oh, uh, not well. Um, but I liked her. She never talked about man problems or, um... This fella. Um... Nope. You know, but she wouldn't have done. She wasn't the sort to moan or to dump on anyone. I, I just can't see how anyone would want to hurt her. You know, not... Not Lizzie, not deliberately. Was it quick? Um, I mean, I mean, um... No, I know what you mean. She died instantly. You're not just saying that? No. You have my word. Ma'am, we've got her. Robert Dawn and the victim. There is a connection. I'd like another word, please. Robert? Not him.
Right, wait in the car. I won't be long. So, how's the world of online dating? Hmm? <laughs> GBH seeks GSOH. Oh, maybe a bit of washing up. I don't touch that, please. You and Lizzie were at school together. Bickmore Comp. She was in the year below you. Oh, well, if I was, I never knew her. Mm. Okay, you're done. I need to get off to work. You know what? I've been up half the night wrapping my brains. The smell in this place. Older, I should say. Once savoured, never forgotten. All right, and what's that? Trichloroethylene pet. Used to strip meat from small mammals. And what are you after? I grew up around a smell like that. On account of me dad. He had more than a passing interest in birds of prey. Ooh, we got right into your paws. But paid my love life, I can tell you that. So even if no one else could smell it, I could. And your hands scrub, scrub. Out damn spot. If your online lasses get one whiff of All that. Right. So what are you? Birds? Mice? Take a look. Sell them to our colleges when I can. Still lives and that. Lizzie. I've seen her in years. She was Beth back then. She's not pretty, like in this. Acne, big braces, thick glasses. I was a bully. Mm. I was the worst of the lot. But I wouldn't have touched Lizzie. She had a way of, I don't know. People were always around her. I was talking to her. I knew what I was looking for. Oh, no enemies. Never a crossed word. Couldn't meet a nicer woman. Now, we get that a lot, don't we? Well, it's only good manners. Don't speak to your little dead. But this woman, this Lizzie, I mean, even your new friend Robert speaks well of her. See. Motion to take the lights. Aye. Not working. Right. Door opens. Lizzie steps out. Well, he couldn't see her. What if he thought she was someone else? Call Kenny. Get him to round up the two lasses who were with her that night. Maisie, was it? Maisie Jones and Tina Robson. Aye, if one of them was the target, he's killed once, he could try it again. And what about Doran? Oh, no change. Surveillance. Hello? If you could just wait somewhere public. No, no, I'll come and collect you. Uh, 
Uh, there's a pub across the way, the ship in, shall I? Yeah, I know it. Wait for me there. flight uniforms with her. And the other one? Maisie? Kenny's on his way over. Good. Yeah. Good. Lizzie, Maisie, Tina. The cottage was a treat. It was booked in that couple's name. Yeah, the, uh, the Franks, the architects. Hey. You want me to give them a call? I want you to get over there. she was hit at speed. So the vehicle comes down the road at speed, mounts the pavement at speed, hits at speed, and drives on. Joyride a stolen car? What? Look at the road. Yeah, there's no skid marks and brake. Street lights were all working. They could have seen they were heading straight for her. I mean, even a joyride is going to start pumping the brakes at that point. All right, so not a joyrider then. I think she was targeted. And not Robert Doran. He was playing pool all night, surveillance watching the whole time. Right. So who then? The husband? Andrew Franks, well, where's the motive? Kenny said he was in bits when he spoke to him. He nearly lost his wife 10 months ago in that car crash. Now he's lost her for real. Anyway, he gave his statement and the alibi checks out. Is he still there at the Franks, Kenny? Yeah, I think so. Why? Mum. Will do. Uh, Mr. Franks, we just need to check something. Your wife's car accident last year. Was anyone injured other than herself? It wasn't Corinne's fault. The other driver came out of nowhere. The coroner said so. Maggie Bishop, 43. Nine months ago, Mr. Giveaway sign shot out of a junction straight in Corinne Frank's car. Coroner ruled accidental death, but said Mrs. Bishop's failure to give way was a major contributing factor. God, would you look at that? Wafer thin, bloody nonsense. Shave a pig, call it ham. Would have been an offence. But it says here the husband was going to challenge the coroner's decision. Yeah, well, I was coming to that. Ever since the inquest into his wife's death, he's been knocking on doors, chief coroners included, trying to get the original findings reviewed. Well, why? What does he think happened? Well, that's what I'm going to ask him. Did 
DCI Stanhope, Northumberland and City Police. Mind if we come in? Thanks. There was trespass they're claiming, and they'll have a job proving it. Sorry? Those gorillas, the council farm out there, security too. The ones who escort me out the council offices every time they ask a question no one wants to answer. I trust it was them who sent you? Nobody sent me, pet. But with a rank, nobody would dare. No, we just wanted to uh, talk about the accident. Talk? Yeah, you know, find out what happened. I want to know what happened to my wife. This. Well, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Oh, that's the point. Nor was she. The approach to the junction where Maggie was killed. Same junction after the council finally cut back the greenery. Look at that. Look at that and tell me the crash was Maggie's fault. But the coroner said accidental death. He said accidental death for which my wife was to blame. What about the other driver? What about her? Well, the coroner didn't think she'd done anything wrong. Are you? Uh, can you give us a hand, please? Please. About the accident. Uh, I'll give you a call when tea's ready. My wife was a cleaner at the hospital. Corinne Franks was an architect. Professional class, like the, like the council lawyers, like the courts, like the coroner. If she had done anything wrong, I doubt we'd know about it. Professional class looks after its own. Mr Bishop, where were you last night between 9 and 11 p.m.? Out. Why? Out where? Out with friends? Drinks after work? I went for a walk. Helps me sleep. Now, what my sergeant's asking is, is there anyone who can confirm your whereabouts? An alibi? You're asking me if I've got an alibi? Mm. And have you? No. Why? Who's dead? Corrine Franks. No alibi. He certainly has a motive. An eye for an eye. Yeah, it'd be quicker to list the people he doesn't blame for his wife's death, wouldn't it? Yeah, but there's no hard evidence to link him to the deaths of either Corrine Franks or Lizzie Faulkner. You know, maybe there is something in this paperwork of his. <coughs> no, seriously. I mean, I looked at it. He keeps details of everything, every meeting, every conversation, medical records. I mean, what must it be like to be his son? He just lost one parent. And he has to watch the other one turn into an obsessive. Still, look on the bright side. We've got a new suspect. You won't have to see Robert Doran anymore. A couple of beers and an opening like that. You think it's all going to come spilling out? What? You know, it's a wonder you ever got anything out of anyone. I'm just saying, get it out in the open. Talk. It might help. Yeah, cos that's what you would do, isn't it? Share. Yeah. I might. <sighs> Listen, I better go. Thanks for the drinks. What we don't have is anything that puts Justin Bishop in contact with Corrine Franks. And since there's insufficient grounds for a warrant to search his place, we're going to start looking at the other end. Hmm? Now, Joe, Corrine Frank's computer, emails, files, anything to, from, or even mentioning Justin Bishop. Kenny. Not the phone records. Phone records, mobile. Gary, Fran, landline. There's two, home and work. Anyone wants me, I'm with Andrew Franks. Call if anything turns up. I know she's dead. I do know that. I just can't seem to make it stick. I keep turning around to tell her what's happened. 
Mr. Franks, is there any reason you can think of why anyone would have wanted to harm your wife? I told you, colleague. No. No. But when Lizzie Faulkner was killed, she was where Corrine should have been. We didn't even book the cottage. We won it in a raffle. It was a champagne weekend. Well, it's a bit of a busman's holiday, seeing as you designed them. That way you passed on it. I wanted to keep it. The accident was awful for Corrine. I think even more than I realised. And Lizzie had helped make it better. After the accident, did Corrine have any contact with Maggie Bishop's family? Yeah, she went to meet them. I thought it was a bad idea, but she felt compelled, thought it might help. And did it? I think it was difficult for all of them. There was a son. Not a little boy, but still. Corrine found it hard, him having lost his mother. She met them just the once? Like I said, it was difficult for all of them. Yeah, but she'd have told you. She wouldn't have held anything back for fear of worrying you. Corrine and I, we were a friendship long before we were a romance. We talked. We're a good partnership. We were good. You never told me you'd met Korean Franks. You didn't ask. She wanted to make herself feel better, visiting the poor and afflicted. Do you have any further contact with her? After that visit? Why would I want to? Mr. Bishop, this is a murder investigation. If I have to keep repeating myself, we can finish this little chat down at the station. No, I never had any further contact with her again. Um, can I use your computer? Go no, home. not finish the campaign handout. You'll have to wait. I never met her again. I never spoke to her again. I never laid eyes on her again. Ma'am, we got something. Uh, same pattern every uh, week to ten days. An incoming call from a number that's never appeared before. Corrine answers. The call lasts a minute, if that. Then over the next couple of days, the same number calls sometimes, several times a day. She never picks up again. As soon as she knows who it is, she stops answering. But at some point, a new number shows. She doesn't recognise it, answers it, and all starts again. A wily bugger's changing his phone. Where's he buying them? All of these calls are coming from cheap pay-as-you-go phones. They're activated for a week and then never used again. Now, I haven't managed to trace all of the phones, but the ones that I have, without exception, were bought within a ten-mile radius of Justin Bishop's house. How far does this go back? Well, it starts around the time of the crash that killed Maggie Bishop. And it doesn't end until Corinne Franks is dead. How many times you say you met Corrine Franks? Once. How many times you talked to her? Once. The same once. Did you ever contact her again on the phone after that? No. Ever try? No. Have you got a car, Mr. Bishop? I did have. It was stolen. And when was that? Three days ago. We went to take Sam for a driving lesson, it had gone. You report it stolen? No, I'm rolling in it, me. Would notice the loss of a car, cause I bloody reported it. Because a car... did this. She hit the bonnet, and then the windscreen, and then the road. And you don't have an alibi. You were out walking on your own, Mr. Bishop. I didn't wish her harm. Joe's confirmed the car was reported stolen. This was found burnt out this morning. 
Forensics are trying to rescue all they can, but they don't hold out too much hope. Which brings it back to us to keep on digging. Anything that puts Justin Bishop in recent contact with Corrine Franks, or anything to tie him into that murderer Lizzie Faulkner. We're still treating that as a case of mistaken identity. Oh, yes. But here's the thing. We've been assuming that if there was contact between Corrine Franks and Justin Bishop, that it was hostile on his part. And let's not forget that these two are linked by a traumatic event. And that scenario can play out in all sorts of ways. Are you serious? Mm. Corrine Franks was a good-looking woman. Justin Bishop was a sad wreck. Oh, and here you are, Kenny. Two marriages behind you, which proves anything is possible. All I'm saying is keep an open mind. Don't want us to miss a connection just because it doesn't look like we're expecting it to. Joe, with me. Where are we going? Andrew Franks. Please tell me we're not taking this to him. His wife and Justin Bishop. No. Andrew Franks told me the accident was awful for Kareen. Even worse than he realised, as if it was starting to sense maybe... There was more going on than he knew about. Right. Like what? Exactly. Like what? My wife is dead. And you come here insinuating that she... I'm not insinuating anything, Mr Franks. I just want you to help us find whoever did this by asking yourself, is it possible? There was something your wife wasn't sharing with you. If she was being threatened, for example. If she was being threatened, she would have told me. Now, I don't know what sad, grubby world you live in, but it isn't my world. And it wasn't Corrine's. I trust you to see yourselves out. You're right. He's scared there's something he doesn't know. Charity raffles. Where'd they get their prizes? Well, they're donated usually, aren't they? with the hospice. My mother spent her last month at Clara Woods. I've been organising the raffle ever since. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> Not really. It's just a matter of providing a prize and chivying a shaming other local businesses into doing the same. <sighs> but yours is the biggie, right? The champagne weekend. Apart from the year someone donated a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know I'll be doing it again, though. Seems a bit tasteless after what happened. Winners announced. I mean, who would know that Corrine and Andrew had one? Anyone who was interested. It's on the hospice website, in the local paper. It's as much about publicity as raising money. What did you think of Corrine and Andrew as a couple? The worst thing couldn't have happened to nicer people. It was the kind of relationship you look at and think, ah, that's how it should be done. There's no sniping, no resentments, no silly games. No secrets? Nah. It wasn't their style. Poor sorry sod. I don't know how he's gonna manage without her. Does your boss like her milk hot or cold? Uh, she thinks she's doing well if it's not coming out of a carton in chunks. <sighs> hey, ten minutes outside and then you can choose an ice cream from the freezer. Yes! Come on, come on, you've been inside all morning. There you go. She asking him about Corrine and Andrew? Oh, don't worry if you can't say. They knew her. We haven't told them how it happened. Sorry. 
Was she a friend? Not really. My job's the kids. This place. She had a career. But we used to talk sometimes. Before the crash, I mean. After that, she got... darker. When I heard, my first thought was that she'd done it herself. You know? Deliberately. Like throwing yourself in front of a train. And when you say darker? Oh, before the crash, she was always laughing. Teasing Tim that he was turning the countryside into a theme park for people who love the views but not the smells. And this place, Tim's big project. She used to call it Hopkins Towers. She took the work, though. I don't suppose she had much choice. She and Andrew were struggling before Tim came along. Is there a chance that she did it herself, I mean? I'm afraid it's a murder investigation. What sort of a world that we made for them. There was clearly a big change after the accident. Enough to make Mrs. Hopkins think that Kareem might have thrown herself in front of that car. What, and you think guilt? Because she was having an affair with Justin Bishop? <sighs> maybe. Or maybe we're just back at the start and he was hounding her. Oh, either way, she came out of that car crash with the devil on her back. Mom, Kareem Francis' bank records. Mom, you need to take a look at this. Yeah. iPad, iPod docs, speakers. Uh, she's been spending like a sailor. Well, she could have bought them for herself. Uh, designer boxer shorts, Chanel aftershave. Uh, but here's the real goodies. Cash withdrawals, all made within streets of where Justin Bishop lives. Yeah, and small amounts, swipe card, no pen. All in a calf, ten minutes walk for his house. Right, Kenny, get over to that cafe. I want a positive ID on both of them. Well, well let's bring him back in. Am I under arrest or what? Not at present. But I should warn you that this interview is being recorded. And an arrest may follow. Someone needs to tell my son where I am. Oh. His mother drove out one day and never came home. He worries. <laughs> and for Christ's sake, don't send a uniform or he really will think I'm dead. Now, Mr. Bishop, in a previous interview, you told me you'd had no further contact with Corrine Franks. After your initial meeting, do you still hold to that answer? Yes. Getting gifts from Corinne Franks. Joe. Those coffees near Justin Bishop's house. What time of day were the transactions? They're all around the same time, 3.34. After school. Hello? Mom, it's Kenny from the cafe. Joe, she was meeting him after school. It's not the father, it's the son. Sam? He's heading towards Renfrew Street. Stop, Sam!
So what do you want to know? So you met Corrine once, twice a week, after school. So? Did Dad know? Wells? Oh. A nice birthday present. Who bought you that? Lovid showed up on her bank statement. Corrine came to the house, and Dad gave her one look and thought, spy, she's spying on us. He wasn't ready. Oh, what about you? Were you ready? Oh, yeah, she was a godsend. Personally, I don't get with the whole designer label thing. Obviously, anything catches your eye, help yourself. Well, why accept it if you don't like it? Oh, you asked her to buy this for you, did you? It's called retail therapy. Made her feel better. Didn't bring your man back, though, did it? All this? Hmm? And then what? When you'd finished emptying her pockets? What then? Get fed up in the end, did you turn on her? The woman who killed your man? No. Monday evening. I told you I went out. But in the car, I hear you're doing great guns with the driving lessons. Boring. Saturday night, early hours of Sunday morning. I was morning. in your bed. Anyone vouch for you? What do you think? Come on, I'll go up for a drive. Move! I've been looking at the coroner's report on your ma'am. Where was she going in the car? And she was in a hurry, running late, busy wife and mother, a full-time job. Oh, she was picking you up from school, was she? Couldn't you have just got the bus? I missed it. Oh, wait for the next one. Oh, yeah, sixth in the evening, late October. She didn't want you coming home in the dark. She was overprotective. How come you missed the bus? ICT suite at school. I'd lose track of time. Yeah. Third time that week. Oh, so who called who? I texted. Now she texts back. Yeah. Yeah, what'd she say? On my way, one of these days you're gonna have to stand on your own two feet. And you texted back? Hmm? Yeah. And what did you say? Can't wait. And maybe if she hadn't been so bloody angry with you, 
Maybe, just maybe she wouldn't have missed that sign. Mm -hmm. Your fault. <sighs> An idea like that. Once it gets inside you, there's nothing anyone can say. So maybe it's what you do now that counts. Yeah, that's what she said. Who, Corrine? Dad's off crusading against low visibility road signs. In walks Corrine, no bairns of her own. And after Sam's done hating her, she's still there waiting to listen. So? So maybe Sam's not to blame here. Maybe this poor kid just lost his man twice over. Oh. Or what? Well, this poor kid has just turned 18, right? Mm. Well, did he own up to all the unanswered phone calls, the Corrin's phone? No, not yet. No? So maybe he was soft on her? Or oh, maybe she's soft on him. Ma'am, Andrew Franks is at the Hopkins house. I'll meet you there. I'm just asking, were you aware your wife was friendly with Sam Bishop? What are you saying now, that she was screwing this... Well, what is he, 16? Not at all, but this was an intense friendship. Intense? This is insane. It all sounds like some tabloid euphemism. Let me tell you. My wife, my wife, we were solid. We had everything. Love, work, marriage, no walls. OK, Mr. Franks, we just wanted to establish if you knew... No, I didn't know because there was nothing to know. She was over the accident. That's not how you put it this morning. Well, it's how I'm putting it now. She was walking, she was smiling, she was over it. You people. We were trying to give him a night off. We were trying to forget about all this. Andrew Franks. What's his alibi again? You're looking at it. A friend in need. Yeah, will you read this? Who's this from? Robert Doran, my man. Oh. When was this? It was years ago. He was banged up and I'd been in prison at the time. Is it true, do you think? What he says? Yeah, I think it probably is. Hey, now, hang on. Did you show this to Madam? Oh, Vera, no. Oh, well, I am on it. Thing is, Joe, where I used to work, if somebody made a mistake, it meant ordering in more stables or printing ink. You know, fur flu that day, but in your world, if something goes wrong, then... You think less of us? No, you prat. The fact that you hang on to this, it's why I hang on to you. Makes you what you are. But your sock drawer's full of these. I get you, he gets what? Look, you are not to blame. Talk to him. Thanks, love. You're welcome. Mm. So am I. Candy for the kid or espresso for the adult? You both. So in the film. 
It's called off a go. I figured if I blew enough cash on stuff he didn't want, maybe he'd actually talk to me. It's actually pretty good. Now, you and Kareem. Right, I've told you. We were friends frequently enough. Yeah, I know. That's not what I'm asking. Listen. You remember she said something like, um, if you feel you've done something wrong, it's what you do next that counts. That's called contrition. Yeah, well, is that how she felt? Contrite? Or something she'd done? Look, you were friends. Sam, come on. She's dead. Help me out here. I'm trying. Were you keeping a secret for her? Something like that. So, OK, the car accident. She wasn't speeding. Your mum came out of nowhere. So how's that Corrine's fault? It wasn't her fault. But she felt she was in the wrong, hmm? She was bad. Something on her mind, distracted. She was distracted. But she wasn't on the phone. We'd have picked that up from the log. She was driving down the lane on her own. Your mum comes... She wasn't on her own. There was someone with her. There was someone else in the car with her. Yes. Kareen wasn't alone in the car when she crashed. She lied to the police, she lied to the coroner. Whatever killed Lizzie, killed Corrine, is inside that crash. And I want to know who was in the car with her. OK, I'm on it. Is Joe with you? No, I haven't seen him since this morning. Well, tell him to turn his phone on. What? You mind if I come in? I kept it. Why, what's that? The letter. What, I wrote that? Yeah. What'd I say? Uh, well, your wife had uh, just visited you in prison, and she was moving on. And your son. Right. He's a bit older than that now, of course. That guy I heard. We stepped out of the pub. He's waiting in the street, threatening my wife. And when he threw the first punch, I was defending myself. You know, we appealed for witnesses. For about 30 seconds. It was a pub full of people. But nobody came forward. No, no, no. You were in that much of a hurry, you just cracked on anyway. Then, in court, when the jury called it, do you know what you did? Huh? You turned to your buddy, you raised your hand, you hey, high five! Hey. High five. Now, go on. I was too young. I me too.
Hey, you caught your killer yet? You got lucky. This was meant to go off to the breakers months ago. It was only the dead woman's widower complaining about the coroner's verdict. Nice of you to turn up. The evidence got clued up in the system. Here we have it. Exhibit E. Corrine's car. We're going to need you to run it for prints and fibres. didn't want to see the other effects. Mrs. Franks was meant to come and collect. We're sent to that many reminders. Sometimes people just want to forget. Uh, well, yeah, right. So where was this found? Boot of the car. Well, thanks, Derek. Ah. Overnight back. Dirty weekend. So what's with the teddy? What's with the passport? I think she was leaving him. I think she was running away. Okay, um, half an hour? Okay. It's Robert Doran. So I gather. But he wants a word. Turbo engine. It's not terminal. It's a job to fix. Well, uh, I was working and I realized that the car in the lane. What, the one you thought you heard the night Lizzie was shot? Aye, it has, a, has the same fault as this one. Same whine in the engine. So you think that this is. No, no, no. This motor was left here over the weekend. I just. I just thought it might help. Anyway, thank you. For Beth. Okay, everyone, stop what you're doing. I want to know about any pending jobs for vehicles with reported turbo problems, all right? Now, you can start with garages in the Tynemouth area and then spread out. So come on, let's get cracking. Come on.
day when he'll be back. Look, I'm not under arrest. I haven't been charged. They just need to rule me out of their investigation. Can you mind the paintwork? Oh, this is ridiculous, love. Mrs. Hopkins, please. Hey, get back inside. Excuse me. Kirsty, you need to calm down. You need to go back inside. You need to phone the solicitor. And stop worrying. are on the dashboard. I imagine they would be. I got a lift several times. Mm. Well, on the dashboard, the seats, the windows, all over. And not just prints, traces of genetic material, I think they call it. <laughs> Delicate lot, forensics. Me, I like to call a spade a spade. Were you having a sexual relationship with Corrine Franks? I didn't kill her. That's not what I asked you. Mr. Hopkins, we can wait until forensics confirm that what they found matches your DNA, or you could say was the trouble. Yes, we had a... We were seeing each other. Oh, an affair. That makes it sound temporary and squalid. Well, whereas having sex in the back of a car with someone else's spouse... Love. We were in love. Andrew, no? Your wife? Cursed his world is the kids. So you and Corrine decide to run away together. Hmm? Oh, with a little escape pod in the boat. Clothes, toothbrush, passport. And then suddenly, wham! Someone else's world crashes right into yours and everything changes. Numbers, telephone numbers. She wouldn't answer if she knew it was me. Oh, what happened to love? There was a moment in the crash, a, a revelation, she called it, that. If she was gonna die, I wasn't the man she wanted by her side. Not the man she wanted to die with. So she went back to her husband. And you hounded her with phone calls. And when that didn't work, oh, the raffle. Did you fix the raffle? For her and Andrew to win, hmm? Reeling her back in. We made love in every room in that house. If being there again didn't bring her to her senses. A shotgun to the chest would. I didn't kill that girl. I didn't kill Corrine. Yet yeah, here you are, the jilted lover, with a motive. And as forensics have just confirmed, the car that killed Corrine Franks. I mean, forensics have just confirmed it was my car. What are you talking about? Traces of Corrine Frank's blood on the front bump, her brain tissue on the windscreen. Where were you the evening she was killed? I was with her husband. I was with Andrew. And Lizzie Faulkner was shot? I was away on business. And your wife? 
Mr. Hopkins, where was she? She couldn't have known about Corrine. It's the kids. That's all she sees is the kids. Come on. Where are we going? We're going to play a game. Yes or no, did your wife have access to a gun? My father had no weapon he hung on to. But where's it kept? It's in a, in a cabinet under the stairs, on, on, on the lock and key. Who has a key? <sighs> we both do. Joe. I thought we were waiting. We are waiting. I'm just going to take a little peep. You stay where you are. still locked in the cupboard, but we'll need to... Well? Hold on, love. Kirsty? The kids with your love. Kirsty. Kirsty, love, we just want to know that you're all right. Well, we're not. Vera! What's that man doing? What man's that, love? Vera! Mom! Love. We're not coming down, are we? We're not leaving this house. Tim's going spare over you, Lot. He puts on a good show, that man. He has no feelings for any of us. Does he? Hmm? Mom? Shh. It's okay. Hey, Kirsty, I'm interested. Um. How do you find out about your husband and, uh... Corinne? He kept finding all these phones he had. He only ever called one number. Tell that man not one more step. Joe. No one wants to hurt you. <sighs> yeah, they do. Here they all come. It's a 
absolutely too late. You see that, don't you? Okay. I tell you what, you're a wonderful mother to those two bands. But don't you see, that's just it. If I go, who'll look after them? How will they manage? They'll be taken care of. No. It's me they look to. Always have done, ever since the minute they came into this world. If I go... <sighs> you see? They have a father. He may have lost sight of you for a minute, but... They mean all the world to him. More than her? More than anything. I don't think so. He'll be there. And one day... Somewhere down the line. So will you. <laughs> Mum, there's a man. Mum, oh, please, give him a chance. When I called you just now, you answered the phone. Taxi, love. Oh, no. Taxi. 
Merci. Come on, mate, it's running. You've been smoking. Don't be daft. Really? Oh. Oh. Right, I see ya. Yeah, night, Lou. Night, night. 